While it's unclear which races Republicans and Democrats will win, it could be days, perhaps even longer, before we know the final midterm results. What is certain is that this election looks different for voters across the U.S. There are many laws in many states that voters are going to be having to navigate for the first time this year. In the wake of the contentious 2020 election, <laughs> rules have changed and more observers have been deployed. Here's a look at how the presidential election made a lasting impact and why some people are concerned that the changes we see this year, from voting regulations and voting methods to poll watchers, could affect voter turnout and the future of our elections. At least 40 states have passed laws in the last two years that either tighten voting rules or expand voting access, according to NYU's Brennan Center for Justice, a public policy think tank that tracks election legislation. If we're talking about whether it's become harder or easier to vote, and I really think it depends on where a voter happens to live. Since 2020, 28 states have passed measures that would make it easier for eligible Americans to register, stay on the rolls, or vote. In Vermont, all registered voters will be mailed a ballot for the November presidential and midterm elections under a law passed in 2021. And in Kentucky, a new law established three days of early in-person voting. Expansive voting laws are a recognition by legislators that more access means a more full, fair, and engaged democracy. 20 states have passed laws that the Brennan Center classifies as restrictive, which can include measures that shorten windows to apply for a mail ballot, limit the availability of ballot drop boxes, impose stricter signature requirements, or impose stricter voter ID requirements. Among these are Arizona's HB 2492 law, which established a proof of citizenship requirement for voter registration. And Georgia's SB 202, which requires voters to provide an approved type of ID, like a driver's license or voter identification card, when requesting and returning an absentee ballot. Republicans say the changes were needed to restore confidence among voters in the integrity of elections, while Democrats believe the law is meant to depress minority turnout and that former President Donald Trump and his supporters corroded faith in the process. No evidence of widespread fraud has been found in the 2020 election, but the unsubstantiated claims have motivated some people to get involved. While poll watching is a common feature where people monitor ballot casting and counting for possible rule violations, there are concerns that highly partisan volunteers could try to intimidate voters this year. One of the features of our election system is this, this transparency, the ability for people to watch and observe, but it also does create a vulnerability if a bad actor gets in. Trey Grayson oversaw two presidential elections and two midterm elections as Kentucky Secretary of State. We have to make sure that the observers aren't intimidating voters or doing something that they shouldn't be doing uh, during that observation process. The RNC says it has recruited over 123,000 poll workers and poll watchers in primary, general, and special elections this cycle. The DNC said state-level Democratic parties take the lead on recruiting poll watchers. It all comes back to balancing the transparency of our system with not wanting folks to be intimidated. We don't want voters to feel like somebody's watching or will do something to them, and that causes them to not vote. More than 43 million ballots have been cast as of November 7th, and there are signs that this year's elections could meet or possibly exceed 2018's midterm turnout. It'll take until well after the election, when most or all mail-in ballots have been counted, before we get a full picture of voter participation. We'll find out if that's just a, a sign of uh, people shifting their voting preferences or a sign of high overall turnout. A recent Wall Street Journal poll shows voter enthusiasm is high, with 81% of respondents saying they definitely will vote this year, and 8% saying they already have. I'm going to be looking for some of these new laws that we're seeing in states, how they work, how they impact turnout, and also the, the poll watcher issue. And then finally, I'm, I want to see the results of some of these election administrator races, secretary of states, and a few governors that appoint secretaries, because that could have a tremendous impact on our, the future of our elections.